Clear prop. Tower 73 is Cherokee, number two, following twin traffic, three mile final. There's nothing to do. One Charlie Bravo, makes for in runway 25, going uh, four mile final. This is Behind the Prop with United Flight Systems owner and licensed pilot Bobby Doss and his co host, major airline captain and designated pilot examiner Wally Mulhern. Now let's go Behind the Prop. What's up, Wally? Hey, Bobby, how are you? I am fantastic. This show is being released on Cyber Monday, and it is all about pilot gift ideas uh, for your pilot in your life. It's a holiday season. We're all hard to shop for nowadays. Wally and I are going to talk through really a number of ideas from kind of cheap to high-end things that your pilot might want. If you have a family member looking to buy you a gift, point them to this show. They'll have plenty of gift ideas at the end of it. And uh, we'll put some links in the show notes to some of the things we talk about. But uh, let's jump right in, Wally. We're going to start cheap. Uh, what kind of what kind of gift ideas are you thinking about on the lower end that you might buy for a family member, or a friend, uh, or a podcast partner? You know, when the Christmas season comes around. There you go. Yeah. Well, you know, w- one of the easiest things is um, you know these vintage wall signs that you can get. There's all kinds of um, uh, metal uh, signs that that go great in a in a hangar if you have a hangar if you have a garage or or just a man cave um you know different airlines different uh, aircraft manufacturers cessna piper beechcraft that sort of stuff um either, there's a one that i've seen it says um you know uh aircraft flight instructor on duty 50 cents an hour so you can tell how vintage that is but um that makes that makes something that's really nice. Um, I, I have them in my hangar and I uh, have them in my garage as well. Um, I think that's a nice nice idea. Yeah, there's some uh, fun ones too. You know, the the looking for a good woman, but she must have a good plane or something. You know, those sorts of signs. We have those in our pilot supply shop. Um, there, there's there's a lot of good stuff at Hobby Lobby, believe it or not. You know they've done a really good job of kind of creating sections for uh, cars and uh, Marvel comics and those sorts of things. There's a really small book in at, at most Hobby Lobbies that have aviation stuff, an old phonetic alphabet, and those sorts of things. So uh, if you if you're looking for something in the fifteen to thirty dollar range, you could probably get some really good vintage signs. Um, and I don't know an aviator that wouldn't hang one of those up somewhere in their garage or office or something like that. Right. Right. Another, another great wall hanging thing is a, a wooden prop. Yep. And, uh, um, I growing up, uh, we had one in our basement and I wish I knew where it was. I don't, I don't know what happened to it, but, um, it was, um, you know, it was hanging over a, a door in our basement. It was always there. And, um, so uh, you can find those as well. Yeah, and I, I bought a couple on Amazon not too long ago for our classroom upgrade. They're not real props, but it's a piece of wood that's been carved into what looks like a prop, and it's painted with black tips. It looks like a vintage prop, and it was only twenty four ninety nine. So wow. um, it's not – no, it is not a Piper Cub prop because that's going to cost you four or 500 bucks uh, if you, to find one of those if you find one at all. But um, – you you can find you can find a vintage prop that a vintage piece of wood that looks like a prop for for twenty five bucks or so. Right. Um, another thing I think all pilots have, and my bag is covered with them because I happen to own a pilot supply shop. But keychains, and there's a large variety of keychains that would make good stocking stuffers. Remove before flight, crew, those sorts of things. Um, one of the things that I'm interested that then started carrying in ours is a company named plane tags and what this group has done is they've taken and i'm assuming graveyards for aircraft and they've taken the skins off these planes and they've stamped the skin with the airplane type the tail number of the original aircraft so um there could be a 727 out there wally that you flew you might be able to find in your logbook that you could go find a plane tag for yeah that would be a plane that you actually flew one day uh, yeah, but they've got everything from 172s to for, to 747s out there that, that they've taken those skins off of and made plane tags for, right. um, which is pretty neat. It's, if you especially if you could find a tag from a plane that someone has flown, that would be really a really cool gift idea. They're a little pricey, about forty bucks, 
Um, but something that would be very unique uh, for the pilot in your life for sure. Yeah. Next thing, uh, you know, every every pilot needs a flight bag. Um, and there are all kinds of flight bags out there. Um, you know, you can you can go to a, a local sporting goods store and, and get a backpack that works uh, works probably very well. But um, I, I think that's this is one of the first things before you go and start buying things, the expensive things like an iPad, like a headset. Uh, you need to protect it. Now, um, you know most headsets will come with its own bag, but um, I personally, you know, I don't like to have lots of stuff with me when I fly around so, or when I, you know, go to an airplane. So I, I have a bag that has a a dedicated headset compartment in it with protection. It's extra, you know, padded extra for that. So um, you know you can go, you can get a flight bag, um, and probably. Thirty dollars, all the way up to several hundred dollars, if you want to get a very nice leather one. So, um, you know, and that uh, that might be something that that um, you may want to ask your pilot what what they're looking for, what they want. It's a little everybody has their own personal preferences, but I would kind of like a purse for a woman in in some regards where. They they like either big or small, compact or not compact. Right. They carry a lot or they don't carry a lot. Right. right. I, I I am the backpack kind of guy. Literally, I mean, I have a backpack from a sporting goods store with logos and keychains all over it. Um, but it it is one of those personal things uh, to some extent. But right. if you bought them and they didn't like it, I'm sure they could return it and find one they did like as well. Yeah. Yeah. So in that flight bag, there, we all need a bunch of little tools and things, and I'm sure we've covered a lot of these things in the past on different shows, but um, a flashlight and a headlamp are something that I think get forgotten in early training. They, yeah. they, 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 get, they get bought and probably stuck in a flight bag when they do their night training for a private pilot student. But when you become a real pilot and you pass that check ride and you start flying family and friends and do some nighttime flying – you probably need some sophisticated lighting equipment. Um, yes, we all have a flashlight on our phone, but something that has a red option is probably good. Um, my flashlight, my fly bag has a green option, which is very thoughtful. I never thought of it until I started using red lights on emergency checklists and you can't read anything that's on the paper. Right. So that green light option still kind of helps your eyes be able to adjust, but lets you read red on checklists. Um, Something that that can be dimmable or maybe not super bright when you're pre-flighting a plane in the cockpit. You don't want a bunch of white light in there. Um, but a headlamp is also something that you can buy an aviation version. It's probably going to cost more than the non-aviation version. Um, but something that you can stick in a stocking stuffer or somebody's flight bag uh, that they might not have put some effort and money into that they would definitely appreciate for sure. Yeah, I think a headlamp um, is... It's it's something that I had never really thought about until recently, but if you're if you're out somewhere um, at night and you you're having a little uh, maybe a little issue with your airplane and um, you're trying to do a little troubleshooting or or I, I don't know just just maybe adding a quart of oil um, might be a good example. I mean it's um, Holding the you funnel and the oil and a yeah, flashlight's you, you tough. Yeah, got, you got one hand on the oil can, you got one hand on the funnel, and, uh, you know, unless the flashlight fits in your mouth, it's it becomes an issue. So a headlamp, and, uh, boy, I mean, you don't have to get an aviation headlamp. You can go down to the local hardware store and probably get one fairly cheap. Yeah, and just speaking of that, I found some at Harbor Freight recently. It's a store in the United States, hardware-type store. Um, in that middle aisle where they got all kinds of good goodies, they had them for one ninety nine. a good white headlamp that took one AAA battery. And wow. that's good enough to throw in a flight bag. Yeah. If it gets damaged, tore up, you're not, you're not, you're not breaking a $35 aviation headlamp. Right. Right. Um, and then other things to go in flight bags, we could list them all, but, uh, we, we've, we've, we've shared our opinion. We, we have the same opinion on this. What about a handheld radio? Uh, Every aviator has an opinion on a handheld radio. Um, Do you carry a handheld radio in your flight bag, Wally? No, and but I own one. (laughs) I own one, and it it 
stays in in the hangar and uh, when I'm up at the airport I turn it on and I listen to um, the the CTAF at the airport and just listen to the airplanes that are coming in um, I, I just I feel like a handheld it's it's a it's a great idea all right to have a third most airplanes that we all fly have two radios a number one and a number two and so we have this uh, handheld radio in case the, those two radios go out and and probably the the reason that those radios would go out would be an electrical failure so you're you're really down to no transponder or anything and and the handheld radio sounds like a great idea um, in practice, it's something that we we're probably very good at pre-flighting the airplane. We go out there and we we walk around the airplane, we check the oil, we check the fuel, we do all that. But we don't probably pre-flight our flight bag. And so when you get up and um, that handheld radio has been sitting in your bag for two, three years, um, how often do we check the batteries on that handheld radio? And I guarantee every time you're going to need it, the batteries are going to be dead. So um, uh, I'm not disciplined enough to check that every time. And I've, I've after after a while, I realized that it was just a weight. It was a a, a weight in my flight bag that um, I I finally determined that for me personally, uh, it was probably not worth keeping in my flight bag. A very similar experience for me. I bought one in my instrument training. I think I bought the Sporties brand that, you know, would shoot an ILS, had some navigational functionality. Um, but I, I, de- I never used it in the cockpit. Uh, and I just th- I likewise thought it was something that was just in my fly bag that was getting beat up. The antenna was getting caught on things and I just ended up taking it out of my fly bag. I think if I ever lose both my radios, I'm probably going to go to a cell phone. Um, and my headset pairs automatically with my cell phone. So I'm probably going to make a phone call before I try to get that handheld radio out of my bag right. nowadays for sure. Right. Another good gift idea in the, in the lower end range is an aviation book of some sort, you know, whether it's a coffee table book that has a bunch of really cool pictures of planes and maybe it's a blue angels book or a Thunderbirds book. I think all aviators would sit and turn pages and look at those, those pictures of those planes to to a to an audio book to a, or a print book. Uh, I recently just was turned on to a book called the A Higher Calling or A Higher Call. Uh, it was a thirteen hour audio book that I listened on probably one point five, but a very very interesting book about a guy who chronicled uh, some aviators from the U S. and some aviators from Germany, and then put these two guys together that flew this really unique flight. Uh, where a German plane didn't shoot down a very damaged B-1 or B-17 bomber. Um, and then these guys reunited, and you can watch them meet each other in a hotel room when they're in their 80s. Um, real crazy story how they ended up meeting each other. But a really, really good book on um, the, 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 the effort of what went into World War II and the planes back in those days and what they were doing and, and then why, why they didn't actually uh, – Go get in a dogfight with each other, but uh, a good book like that is something that I think aviators can appreciate and enjoy. That book has like nine thousand reviews and all five stars on Amazon. Um, really good book, but you can find all kinds of things, historical stories. We had Tammy Jo Schultz on this show, and she's written a book uh, called Nerves of Steel. Uh, I listened to that book. Really good book on on her career and then what happened on that faithful day when, when her plane had issues as well. Um, I'm sure there's a Sully book out there. Any, any aviation books that come to mind that you would recommend Wally for the person looking to buy something? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm an Alaska freak. Um, so I, um, many years ago, I, I did a lot of Anchorage layovers and there was a, a bookstore in downtown Anchorage and I used to go into it every time, and, and it was right about the time The Deadliest Catch came out. So I started buying all these books in Alaska about crab fishing. Well, after I read them all, which there's probably about eight of them, um, I moved down the aisle in this bookstore where they had all these Alaska books, and uh, I found this section on bush pilots. 
And there are all kinds of um, books on, on Alaska bush pilots. One uh, Alaskan bush pilot that, whose name comes to mind is a, is a gentleman by the name of Don Sheldon. And um, so I read biographies, autobiographies, all about his career up there. But it, it's just really fascinating stuff. So, I mean, you could just go on Amazon or just, just Google Alaska aviation books hmm. and uh, all kinds of um, – um, very, very interesting stories about, um, you know, a, a, a different type of flying than probably most of us are used to. Yeah. I hear those guys really know how to fly an aircraft up there just cause it's cold. It's, um, different, different altitudes and they don't have very long runways to say the least. Right. Right. I, along the line, still trying to stay in the lower end range. I think that, um, a good battery, backup battery for your flight bag or to give to your pilot in your life for their flight bag is a good option as well. The We, we all have things that run electronic flight bags nowadays, things that run our iPhones and any other cell phone. A good backup battery that could charge those items or keep those things going in the cockpit would be a really good gift. Um, and, and we probably all have the freebie, small little battery pack, but... This is one where I would say go ahead and spend a little bit of money and get one that's going to last a long time, produce a lot of power. I carry a uh, something about eight inches long, and um, I don't forget the name of it, but it it'll charge my iPad three times. So you could go all the way through a charge and charge it again three times. Uh, so it's got a lot of uh, juice in it for sure. I had one. I've since lost it, but I, I hope somebody's enjoying this battery pack. Um, and the, the thing that I really liked about the battery pack that I had is it had a, a built in cord. So I, I didn't have to have another cord. So it was extremely convenient, um, to just be able to, this battery pack with the built in cord would go straight into my iPhone. Um, and with that in mind, you know, maybe a, a, uh, you know, keeping a, um, a cord to charge your device in airplanes, airplanes are, we're getting to see more and more that have USB ports um, built into the um, the panel, and uh, obviously, if you don't have a cord, it doesn't do you much good. So, um, you know, that might be something, and and maybe a, a longer cord than than three feet. So, if you happen to be sitting in the back of an airplane, you can still get it to the front of the airplane and plug plug your stuff in. And now, like anything in aviation, it jumps to pricey pretty quick, right? I mean, we, we, we've, we've shared all the uh, reasonable things um, for those pilots you don't really, really love. These are the pilots. You know, these gifts are for pilots that you really have to love at this point um, because the price tag goes up pretty quick. Um, and we'll start with the, the one that I think we all think about. And that's a headset, right? Yeah. Uh, I bought, I think I walked into this school and bought a hundred and ten dollar headset for my first headset uh, based on the advice of someone who said look it'll it'll become your passenger headset one day when you're ready to upgrade and maybe you don't love flying and you don't end up really needing this headset so so buy something cheap to start that might be all well and good and, and maybe you have someone who's just getting into flight training go out there and buy them that that first cheaper headset that'll become their passenger headset one day but i think we're all enamored with um, technology in some respect and the the Bose noise canceling Bluetooth attaching um, headset is what a lot of people aspire to have a lot of questions about is it really worth the money they're over a thousand dollars but it is a very very good headset uh, I have used one in the past we're a David Clark dealer I would argue that the David Clark noise canceling headsets are just as good and fit just as comfortably on your head um, but it's a preference thing too. Do you want inner ears, outer ears, big cups, little cups? There's a million options out there. Um, but a headset would probably never be a bad gift for a pilot. Yeah. I, I currently have, uh, lots of headsets. I, um, I use a telex headset with my airline, uh, job that, that just goes in one ear. It's got a molded ear piece. Uh, this telex headset is over 40 years old wow. and it still works just as well as it did the day I bought it. Um, I also have a couple of David Clark headsets that we use as passenger uh, headsets in our airplanes. 
Uh, one of those David Clark headsets, again, was I, I used it as a flight instructor in, in the early 80s, so it's coming up on its 40-year anniversary as well, and it works just fine. And then um, I my everyday headset that I use with general aviation is a Bose, and uh, it it's, um, it you know, the, these things, as long as you take care of them and protect them, um, they they just they just keep working. That's true. Maybe you have to replace the ear cups from time right, to time. Yeah, they yeah. get sweating a little nasty, but um, and maybe the the foam on the mic piece. But other than that, if you take good care of them, they'll they'll, they'll structurally last a very very long time. And I have used uh, when I got my seaplane rating, they had light speed headsets in that uh, in the seaplane, and uh, that worked really well, uh, noise canceling as well. So. Um, I, you, I don't think you can go wrong with any of the any of the big manufacturers. As we keep talking about expensive gifts, we're talking technology in the cockpit, really and truly. For most of us pilots nowadays, we have the ability to get, see other planes in the air with us and other things going on, but not all of us have made the investment in those tools yet. And I would bet the aviator in your life would love an ADS-B in receiver of some sort. It probably depends on the technology they use to navigate and then use in their electronic flight bag, i.e., is it a Garmin flight bag or is it Wings X or is it ForeFlight? Um, ForeFlight is definitely an industry leader, but uh, you might check with your aviator to make sure w- which one they're using. But there's some one there's some of these ADS-B receivers that work with many different types and some that are. Uh, for flight only, but they range anywhere from 299 bucks uh, without a battery that's built in to all the way up to 700 bucks um, with a battery built in and some capabilities. There's there's a little bit of a, a buyer's guide need for this. So um, again, I think I would talk to my aviator in my life, but they they have some feature functionalities that are very similar and then some that aren't quite the same across the board. So um I have a feeling your aviator would know the exact one they wanted and they would be able to give you that information. But a good ADS-B receiver uh, is something that all pilots should have in the cockpit nowadays for sure. Absolutely. It's, it, you know, seeing traffic in the cockpit is something that um, if you're not used to it, you, you probably listen to this and think, well, uh, I'm, I'm just looking outside and I've survived all this time without it. Uh, what's the big deal? Um, but once you have one and you see all the traffic that's out there that you never saw before, um, then going without it is something that you're, you're probably a little bit reluctant to do. So yeah, it's definitely something that's very, very nice to have. Yeah. And it's not just that it's traffic. It's, you can see if the traffic in front of you is descending uh, or climbing, uh, turning. There's just so much information about what's going on now. Uh, all because of ADS-B, that every aircraft in controlled airspace has this stuff. It's it's just extremely valuable. And then most of us, when we're in non-controlled airspace, have our ADS-B on, so you're seeing all that traffic as well. Right. It'd be very rare that you wouldn't see uh, somebody on your screen. Yeah. Um, other expensive things. We, we, we talk about this electronic flight bag. Well, you need something to display this electronic flight bag on, uh, and that gets us into the iPad world. Um I'm not too familiar with any Android products that are out there. I'm sure there's some. I've, I've read in blogs that, you know, what's the Android version of ForeFlight? There is no such thing for ForeFlight, but there are, there are competitors. Um, and there's some third-party products that are all-inclusive, like a Garmin. You know, you can buy a Garmin GPS that it has all in, in one kind of device. But most pilots are using some form of, uh, of an iPad, even, even people that love and die by Android phones. They probably have an iPad for for flight, and Apple just released what I think is the greatest thing in the world for aviation. They highlighted for flight and electronic flight bags when they first showed this device on their keynote speech, and that is the new iPad Mini uh, that works with the Gen Two Pencil, Apple Pencil. It's a great, great device. I bought one the day that they were launched, uh, and it is it is truly an amazing device. So with my with my Apple Pencil on my iPad Mini, I don't have to use paper anymore. And that I was looking for that to be the the thing that was a game changer for me. I can assure you, uh, I, I I would hope and think that any pilot 
uh, would put a Apple iPad into use in the cockpit for sure. Um, if you if you were to be kind enough and love them enough and were able to spend that kind of money uh, and and put an electronic flight bag on their iPad. Yeah, and you know it. Uh I, I do believe the iPad mini is probably the perfect size for the, the cockpit. Um, I have one, a very old one that, that we use in our, our airplane. Um, but um, when I'm doing check rides and most of my general aviation flying, I'm just using a, a normal iPad. Um, uh, you know, it maybe doesn't fit on a yoke mount, that kind of thing. But um, uh, if you're looking for um, just a... Um, iPad for general use, you know, the, the normal iPad Air works just fine. I, I do have the iPad Pro, and it's probably overkill. I probably don't need all that. Uh, the iPad Air works just fine. I will say this. If, you, if you're going to buy some with an iPad, um, understand that to get the position of the airplane displayed on that iPad, you have to buy the iPad that has cellular capability because that has the GPS chip in it. Now, you don't have to buy a cellular plan, but you have to have that that in there. So if you have an iPad and you do not have an ADS-B receiver and you want to be able to display your position on the, on the iPad, um, you're going to have to have the one with the cellular chip in it. So um, it's another probably $130 or so for most iPads to get the cellular capable version. And with that iPad comes the decision on what do I want to put it on, right? Or how do I want to take care of it and protect it? And uh, that's where you would need some form of a knee board, a carrying case. A, Wally said yoke mount. There's a million versions out there uh, as well. A window suction cup, which uh, I'm not a fan of because it does create a small blind spot in some cases. But you're, you're going to need something. And I have become a huge fan of, of a product line called Flyboys and Pivot. Uh, they're a local company here, less than five miles from this airport. Uh, I've met many of their company, and I just think what they're doing and what they're innovating on is is really, really cool stuff. They have a connection that will fit on any of their iPad kind of cases, and then it'll fit on your knee board. It'll fit on a window suction cup. Once you, once you have their brand, you have a lot of options uh, to mount the iPad into your knee board and a yoke mount or a window mount. And uh, I just think they've come up with some innovative stuff. So we'll put some links to their stuff in the show notes. But um, if you want a case and you want something that's super versatile for the cockpit, the iPad mini case from Flyboys is one that uh, you can't go wrong with for sure. Next, uh, since aviation is expensive and we're talking about expensive toys and gifts, Every aviator could enjoy a gift certificate of some sort. Um, Wally, I've heard you say in the past, you you buy your girls something that are both pilots every year at this time of year. What is it that you buy your girls every time of this time of year? It, it, it's funny because uh, we just talked about this the other day. I, we were we were having dinner and and um, and I brought this up when when I was when I was in high school. Every year for Christmas, I got two tires. Uh, not a very, oh, I, not a really cool gift, but I got two tires every year that went on my 1974 Mustang, and um, uh, it was just a, a yearly thing. Um, and and that kind of thing with my my daughters is a subscription to Four Flight. Um, every their their subscription runs out on literally runs out on 1225. So I, I just said to them, I, my oldest daughter is now with an airline. I, I asked her, I said, do you, you, you still want a subscription to Four Flight? And she said, oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> and, and it was funny because when I, when I brought this up to them, I, I thought they would both say, yeah, I guess, I, guess, I guess that's a good Christmas gift. But they actually said it enthusiastically. They both said, oh, yeah, yeah, we, wanna, we want our subscription to Four Flight. So I was kind of excited. That's just one of those things that if you got a great dad that's going to pay for it, you don't want to pay for that one yourself right. for sure. But there, there are there is a way on four flight to go out and buy a, a hundred dollar, two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar gift certificate. So if you if you have heard of that or you think your aviator would enjoy that, you could buy them the gift certificate. They could tag it on the end of their subscription if they already have one, and it's something that they would enthusiastically be happy about. 
Um, there's all kinds of other gift certificate ideas that are out there. Um, just money at a fly school uh, would be great. And uh, some fly schools probably give you a, a, a little bit of a bump. If you put $1,000 on someone's account, they might make it $1,200 or $1,100 if they uh, left it on the account. Um, you can get maybe a, a, an online course for your aviator. We're all on, always trying to learn more and be better pilots. So maybe you have a private uh, pilot aviator in your family and they want to get their instrument rating, then buying them a two or $300 online course for that instrument rating is something that I know they would be very appreciative of and would save them uh, quite a bit of money on their training, uh, no matter what the rating is they're working towards. I'm a big fan of King School. Uh, they, uh, they, they take a bad rap because some of their videos are old, but man, they did something very unique and early on in aviation and uh, I'm a huge fan of what they've done, and their their videos hold true today just like they did in the 80s and 90s when they were making all those things. Uh, so if you don't know where to go, I would highly recommend King School, King Schools. Um, other type subscriptions, maybe a membership to the AOPA, that's the Airplane Owners and Pilots Association. It's a group that does a lot of good for aviation, aviation and aviators. Um, the monthly, or sorry, the annual subscription to that service is a uh, eighty dollars, and uh, something that I think every aviator should be a part of. Maybe a magazine subscription, Wally, like Plane and Pi- uh, Plane and Pilot magazine. Probably get that on Cyber Monday uh, today, the day you're listening to this show. Hopefully, probably get that for uh, less than ten bucks a year, maybe. Uh, to get somebody in your um, aviator family uh, a, a monthly subscription to that magazine. Yeah, another another subscription that that I've subscribed to that I I really uh, find very um, helpful to me is NTSB Reporter. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, organization that that takes the NTSB accident data and puts it in a little bit of a newsletter format. Comes out every every month and uh I, I don't even know what it is the, the cost but it's probably about 20 25 dollars for for that subscription and um basically you you get uh they they take one accident and really go into depth on it and then all the other ones are um a little bit more abbreviated if you will i mean this is all stuff that you could find on the ntsb website but it's somebody who's actually or some organization who's actually gone and organized it um it's 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 a good read it's very educational lots of good gift certificate type ideas one that we were joking about before we started recording is why don't you buy your aviator a check ride uh they could come uh take a check ride with wally or, or wally could come find them wherever they are uh, a check ride fee is something that I think is a is a big a big expense that's hard for some aviators to come up with, and a reason why I would say some aviators don't even finish their certificates at times is because they can't come up with the dollars for that that last mile. Right. And uh, something that would be a really really good gift if you could uh, afford to do that for a friend or a family member, uh, a check ride fee, gift certificate, or, or the money would be really really nice for sure. Um, and the last the, the kind of gift certificate idea or buying something that an aviator might need is um, a lot of us start with paper logbooks and flight instructors that work here get to where they put 1,500 hours in their logbook and they're hoping to convert it to electronic logbook. Um, there are some services out there. I have a friend who does it. If you need to find somebody, uh, feel free to send me an email. I'll put you in contact with them, uh, but they'll take your paper logbook and convert it to a, an ele- put it in whatever electronic flight bag you want for flight as an example, uh, and you won't have to do all that pinning all those those flight records in. They'll do it for you. Another great gift certificate idea for a pilot or aviator in your family or friend group. Um, last thing I'll throw out there is uh, I, I think a simulator is important for home use as, as people are going through their aviation career. Instrument rating is probably what most of us think is the most difficult rating to get. And it's because it's a lot of a lot of book knowledge and it's a lot of flying knowledge that doesn't come really quick and easy. And if you had a home simulator, you can repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat things that'll make you a much better instrument pilot. Um, I would bet on Cyber Monday there'll be deals on both X Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Their list price, both of them, are sixty bucks. I highly recommend 
a joystick. Uh, I always recommend the Logitech X52. It's got two pieces to it, uh, one that'll help you fly the plane and one that'll give you like throttle and flaps and brakes. And I think it's important that you're touching those switches and moving things while you're working on checklists, even on a home simulator. So if you have someone in your life that is working to be a professional pilot, uh, a simulator, piece of software, and a nice joystick, probably all in, you're thinking 200 225 bucks, uh, probably less than one hour of flight time with an instructor in most cases. It is a, uh, a good investment for that, that aviator in your life. And they will get to practice, 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 and something that I highly recommend. Anything else to add, Wally, to this holiday gift idea show for pilots? No, I'm, I I guess one thing we didn't touch on was pilot watches, and there's just all kinds of watches. Um, you know, I have an Apple Watch. I don't have a dedicated um, pilot watch, but um, Garmin has some really cool ones. And um, um, so... Uh, that that's a thought as well, I guess. Oh, and there's there's many other ideas. Anything with a tail number on it for the person who owns a plane to ID card holders to I mean the list goes on and on. You 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 can surely find something, but these are probably the items that we discussed top of mind for most aviators and will make them happy pilots and happy holiday people for sure. As always, fly safe and stay behind the prop. Thanks for checking out the Behind the Prop podcast. Be sure to click subscribe and check us out online at BehindTheProp.com. Behind the Prop is recorded in Houston, Texas. Creator and host is Bobby Doss. Co-host is Wally Mulhern. The show is for entertainment purposes only and is not meant to replace actual flight instruction. Thanks for listening and remember, fly safe.